Take out the Oregon coast with the fading light. Still, though, this is our sky cam out of Cannon Beach. And you oh, that's can, nice. Isn't that great? Some clearing happening out of the Oregon coast. 45 degrees at Cannon right now. And the east was extending offshore, but they're not very strong there. But boy, farther offshore, there's just a monster of a storm, which is helping to generate our east winds. I'll show it to you in just a minute. Wind advisory in effect for the Portland area until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Then the winds will slacken. They won't disappear. We'll be dealing with east winds for several days, but they will ramp up like they did today and tonight. Back off, ramp up every time an area of low pressure approaches the Oregon coast. We got a winter weather advisory on the east side of the Cascades and out through Wasco County and in the Hood River Valley, in the upper Hood River Valley, especially because you may get a little bit of snow and some freezing rain. So that's the trouble spot in terms of icy conditions closest to Portland. Winded uh, warning for the Pendleton area and then wind warnings also in southern Oregon because of this storm. The winds today have been brisk, 69 miles an hour up at Corbett. Crown Point's wind gauge not transmitting data right now, so hopefully we'll get that back soon. Up at the I-205 bridge, Augusta 47, the Fremont Bridge 44, Portland and the West Hills also gust close to 40 miles an hour. Tomorrow, cloudy in the morning, but it should be dry for a little while. Kind of like today. It was dry early and then the rain came in late. Sunrise tomorrow at 751. Our latest sunrises of the year until the 9th of January and they'll begin to get earlier. 38 miles an hour at the airport. Aurora 24, but the biggest gust on the map here was down in Medford with that gust of 53 strong winds in the Rogue Valley. Now watch our wind forecast here starting tomorrow morning. Still strong east winds 36 33 miles an hour for Portland and Hillsboro respectively. Then the numbers begin to back off a little bit of a south wind uh, down the valley and on the Oregon coast with gusts near 40 at Newport. But as we go through the day tomorrow, the winds back off quite a bit and even turn a little bit southerly for a time. But then watch on Friday. Here they come back again. Easterly winds uh, low early, but then they pick up again Friday night and into Saturday is another area of low pressure approaches the Oregon coast. The rain is pushing north into Washington right now, and it was not very heavy. Salem had 2400 of an inch. That was the most on the map, the most in Oregon, about a third of an inch down in Eugene. OK, I mentioned a big storm, right? It's just absolutely massive. Here it is off the coast of well, off the entire West Coast, basically very deep low pressure, which means it's a very strong storm. And it's actually stronger at one point this morning than the historic Columbus Day storm was. But the orientation of the wind field is different. We have east winds, not south winds. Those are down in California where they will be dealing with inches of rain, like 10 inches of rain down that way. And of course, winds like that over the ocean generating big swells. We've got 20 footers off the coast. But look, east winds tomorrow, but really not much rain. That's today, basically. But here's tomorrow for you. A couple of sprinkles around. The east winds continue, but they will back off towards the later part of the day. Another band of moisture coming in Friday afternoon. So again, it all just times out as these areas of low pressure approach the coast. The strongest parts will remain to the south. So look at Brookings with nearly four inches of rain. This is by Saturday morning, Portland about a half an inch of rain. So big, big difference there keeps on piling up down that way. And as we go into California, you can see the heavy rain from San Francisco down through Monterey. Los Angeles may get seven inches of rain between now and you know over the next week. That is some serious water. They can use the water, but it's too much too soon. They've got flooding concerns. Snowfall, same story. A little bit of Mount Hood, but look at Mount Shasta. Upwards of 80 inches over the next week. Yeah, 80 inches of new snow there. Just impressive. 44 degrees right now. Freezing level has jumped up to 8,000 feet. It'll drop off a little bit tomorrow. So windy into the morning hours and then dry in the morning hours and then rain in the afternoon again. High of about 51, so the temperature's not a problem. We stay above freezing. But we've got rain every day, at least part of every day, for the next week. So January, you know, it's maybe not as brutal as February, but certainly.